Hello everyone, Hypers here, and in today's video will be a little bit different from everything that I've been doing so far, because yesterday uh, there's been a huge um, outbreak of discussion on Twitter that relates to pretty much what I do in the game, and that is largely theory crafting, then sharing that information with the community, um, or staying in contact with theory crafters, taking in the information and then relaying it to my community. So if you go over to the competitive WoW subreddit, there was a post made about this that kind of sums it up. If you want to find everything, I will have it linked in the description box. Um, this post has over 500 comments. There was also a post made on the main WoW forum that initially was taken down, but then this one got cross posted. Um, so there's a lot of opinions regarding this topic. This whole thing started when a systems designer um, from Blizzard, WoW in particular, made a tweet about theory crafting and how it impacts the feedback that they're getting. So I'll go through this thread and kind of summarize it and give you guys my opinion on it, because I believe this impacts everyone in the game, not just the top end. So they said that theory crafting is more centralized and instantaneously visible than ever before. People compute results and instantly disseminate them through a whole community in real time. For example, in class discords with each beta update. This is destroying feedback. Um, then it followed up by saying that buffs and nerfs discourse drowns out so much discussion that I often have a hard time, frankly, being able to parse feedback to any productive end. Even if I want to go reading about opinions on a spec, it's hard to know what's untainted by it. It can often appear that personal feedback by definition, recounting of people's reactions to specific elements or moments while playing, is dwarfed by opinions originating from some consensus of uh, whether there was a net buff relative to some prior update. Anyway, I don't know what to do about this, but the correlation between collective emotional valence in response to a class slash combat change and immediate isolated power impact of this change is so strong that it's hard to reach um, confident conclusions that aren't affected by it. So the main point here that they're trying to make is People are so stuck and focused on the numbers of a specific change that they forget to give feedback on how this affects the spec or a class. For example, if they buff a buff or nerf a legendary or change something about it, people immediately go to numbers. And to some extent, that is true. Um, and then instead of giving feedback on how this change feels to the class overall, they immediately focus on those numbers, and that is making it hard for them to get accurate feedback. Um, I have a lot of opinions on this, and so do other content creators. So my biggest concern with that whole thread is not even about the numbers and how fixated people get on the numbers. I'm rather concerned about where Blizzard is getting their feedback from, because if they're having a hard time sifting through the feedback that they're getting to find good feedback that's untainted by you know seeing a post in a class discord because when you're reading feedback as a developer you don't know where this player got these ideas from you don't know if they came up with the ideas on their own and or you don't know if they simply saw a message or a line of text in a discord and now are just echoing the same sentiment um this led me to posting um, a reply that essentially talks about how in other games that have a professional scene, they have a direct way of conversing with the developers of the game. So for example, in League of Legends, um, players, professional players have a direct avenue of contacting people who are in tune of like uh, champion design, uh, balance, map issues, anything along those lines, the players, the professional players have a direct way of relaying feedback. And as a developer, you probably consider the feedback of a professional player differently than a player who just logs on once or twice a week. Um, and that is something that WoW was missing um, and is missing in my opinion. So I made a post that I really wish that the top end players in the WoW community from all different avenues PvE, PvP, Mythic Plus, had a way of sharing their feedback directly to the Blizzard devs. Because often, we go through as many channels as we can to give feedback, 
with the hopes that they fall on the eyes of a developer, they happen to see it, and then they take it into consideration. So we go through Twitter, YouTube, forums, uh, Google Documents, Discords, basically everything we can, but they're just in the hopes that someone might see it. Most of the feedback that is given by top-end players in the WoW community probably ends up not ever being seen by a Blizzard dev. So I made this post, and right after I made it, a few people started pointing out that there is something that exists along these lines in WoW and has existed in the past. And those are the private forums. So I will go over to Magdalena's post. Um, they made a huge thread about how the private forums operated and what their purpose was. So if you didn't know this for WoW, back in Mists of Pandaria during Throne of Thunder, they created, or Blizzard created, a set of private forums where they invited top end players or theory crafters um, from each like spec and class to kind of represent um, their, their characters and give accurate feedback on how things can be improved. So in these forums, it was a very limited number of people and there were some WoW developers in there as well. So initially, they were able to give feedback. The WoW developers would pretty much always see it um, and then either like respond, have a conversation with the players um, or you know state, okay, this is good, this is not so good or whatever. But these forums started quickly going downhill. I'm not going to read this entire post. Um, you can find it in the Reddit thread if you want. It's linked in there. But essentially, these private forums where top end players were supposed to be able to have a direct avenue to Blizzard to give feedback quickly started declining. So as early as Worlds of Draenor, these private forums essentially stopped having an impact on the classes. After MOP, which had probably the strongest class design that we've seen in WoW in a long time, Blizzard started developing kind of an arrogance towards um, their capabilities of making good game, making good classes, good specs, fun spells, and so on. So a larger and larger portion of the feedback started being ignored on these forums. Theory crafters from each class kept posting, kept posting, but there was less response from the developers. Uh, in some cases, there was no response from the developers. And in very few cases, there were actually responses that were outright um, talking down to the person who was trying to give feedback. So this is an example up here on the screen. Uh, but developers started essentially not even considering the player's feedback, but talking back as if their feedback was either um, irrelevant or they were giving bad feedback or just annoyed that players were actually trying to you know, improve things. Um, and that is an absolutely massive problem that I think we're having in WoW right now, because it seems that a lot of the feedback that is being given is being either ignored or isn't even being considered at all um, just because of where it's coming from. So a lot of players in community discords or top-end players have tried their best to put together very thought-out um, feedback regarding their class that is not just focused on numbers. Anything you do in a competitive sense will have been influenced by the numbers, but a lot of the feedback that is given has absolutely nothing to do with numbers. Um, for example, I made a bunch of feedback on Unholy DK that was not... I don't think I ever talked about the damage of a single ability or a single legendary. I only talked about things that feel bad, um, obviously more objective terms, but things along those lines. So these private forums essentially stopped existing. It got so bad in Legion that they deleted them and essentially remade them. But the rebirth of these private forums ended up being even worse than the initial um, try, just because there was almost no interaction between the developers and the 
people actually trying to give feedback. So it just felt like another avenue for players to post feedback that ends up floating around in the abyss, in the void, um, and ends up not being heard by anyone. Another person, Garg, who was in Midwinter, um, who was also part of these private forums, gave their opinion on it, and essentially just reinforced what Magdalena had to say, that a lot of the feedback that was given was ignored. So if you get invited to the most private, most elite, most direct line of communication with Blizzard, and you're still absolutely ignored or talked down onto, why would you even take the time to still try and improve, and improve this game? So the private forums essentially fizzled out entirely. Um, there is almost no interaction between Blizzard and Theory Crafters. And this leaves Blizzard with the only place to get feedback from is the general community, the general forums, um, Reddit, Discords, and things along those lines. So these private forums absolutely failed. Um, then people started talking about how theory crafting is actually impacting the feedback that they're getting um, from the general public. So if you're part of any class discord, if you do any mythic rating, you know, higher end mythic, plus, not even higher end mythic plus, plus tens, if you do any arena, um, probably for PvP less so, but you know that in class discords, there's a very direct source of information that you're getting. Um, as well as guides through websites that just recommends you a specific talent build to play, um, you know, specific legendaries, if those exist, what enchants, gems, it just tells you your loadout, what you should go for. And that information ends up reaching the mass public. So now if you're doing a mythic raid boss um, and you're, I don't know, a frost mage, and there's two other frost mages in your raid group and your talent build is different than theirs and you're the one doing less damage they will probably point it out to you so now you are kind of forced to swap to their build because it's doing more damage and people view this as a bad thing um, a lot of people bring up the argument that you should be able to play what you want in wow and that is true to some extent um, if you're by yourself leveling doing heroic dungeons, you know, LFR, random battlegrounds, anything along those lines, absolutely play whatever you want. But when it comes to any ranked aspect of the game or any what's considered difficult aspect of the game, there is a clear um, right answer when you're playing a specific class. And that is something that has always been the case and will always be the case. And that is the meta. Every single competitive game out there has a meta. And it seems like Blizzard is very, very um, reluctant to embrace the meta or try to change up the meta by making changes to a spec and to the talents in particular. Um, to bring you this example, as a Frost DK, throughout the entirety of BFA um, up until the last tier, well, even in the last tier, if you were playing Breath of Sindragosa and the Breath of Sindragosa build itself, you were playing the meta build. If you were playing Obliteration, that was such an off-meta build that your damage compared to someone playing the meta build was laughable. And in past expansions, in Draenor, in Legion, um, even in WAD, the meta would change because of tier sets. And tier sets usually had a pretty big impact on the talent meta, um, just because they had such a big impact on your gameplay. But with that out of the game, the meta has become incredibly stale for almost every single class and spec, because you only get class changes once at the beginning of the expansion, and that's pretty much it. From there, they will try to do minor balancing here and there, but even then, they very rarely target specific abilities that cause you to be stuck in the cookie cutter or the meta build. So in my opinion, the meta will always be part of the game, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. What's a bad thing is that top-end players don't have a way of relaying good information to Blizzard, and Blizzard is not in turn communicating with the player base 
as to what they're intending to do. Um, for example, at the beginning of every expansion, they tend to look at each spec and be like, okay, what's, what are the problems with this spec? What are we trying to change about it? And what is the end goal for this specific spec? And internally, they have those discussions and they have that information available. But as the general public, we are privy to none of that. So this means that the feedback we give is essentially given blindly. We don't know what their intent is with a specific class. For example, uh, to bring up Frost DKs with dual wield versus two hand, when they initially brought up the idea, I didn't know what their intent was. Did they just wanted to make it like Windwalkers where the difference between using a two-handed weapon or a one-handed weapon or dual wield is purely cosmetic? Or did they actually want it to have a gameplay impact on the spec? Because that absolutely changes how you give feedback and the type of feedback you give to them. Um, and without that information available, we are just essentially putting on a blindfold and throwing darts um, with the feedback we're giving. Obviously, we try to make the spec uh, work the best it can, but each player has kind of a different opinion on how a spec should be played. So having a clear idea of their intention and the direction that they're taking with a spec or a class in particular would make it so feedback could be a lot more uh, targeted rather than general. On top of this, I think Blizzard needs to change with the times. You can't design a game like it's still 2004 because information is not available the same way as it was in 2004. The game has evolved the internet has evolved, internet culture has evolved, the sources where we get information from, discords, websites, um, the resources we have available, everything has evolved so much that you can't just view the game like it was back in the day. And that is, I think, a big problem that Blizzard is having, um, is that they're too stubborn to evolve with the times in terms of where they get their feedback from, how they get their feedback, the type of feedback they're getting, and in return, the type of communication that they're sharing with the community. Receiving a three sentence blue post that there's going to be upcoming changes to a spec um, in a new beta build or whatever is fine, but that doesn't help the community give you feedback at all. Um, if anything, it just leads to even more speculation about how you're going to fix things, what you're going to fix, and um, lead to feedback that maybe the developers didn't want in the first place. And this leads us to the last point, and that is specifically the type of feedback and how feedback is given as far as formatting it and what you include in the feedback. One of the developers, um, I couldn't find this tweet, essentially said that they never want to hear you give feedback that includes suggestions on how they should change. Uh, they simply want to be told that there's a problem and then let them fix it. And that, I believe, is an extremely arrogant way of developing a game that has so many little systems, so many tweaks here and there, so many classes. And seemingly, uh, Blizzard is short-staffed when it comes to class design. Um, and that was very apparent by the Shadowlands class reworks and so on. Why wouldn't you want to rely on a community who spends large portions of their days thinking about how to make a spec better. Does that mean that you should take into account and c strongly consider or suggest every single um, piece of feedback and suggestion that was made to you? Absolutely not. 90% of the ideas that will be thrown at you as a developer will probably be garbage. But what if the 10% or the 5% has ideas that a single person couldn't come up with. And that is the beauty of crowdfunding and crowdfunding knowledge in general, is that whenever you put that many people together, they will come up with things that a single person could not, even if that single person was miles better at the specific task than the crowd, than each individual in the crowd. Um, so the fact that they are reluctant and stubborn when it comes to targeted feedback and targeted suggestions in particular, makes me lose a lot of hope in the way that WoW is being developed and the future of WoW in general. 
So let me know what you think. Are you on Blizzard's side with this? Do you think that a lot of the feedback they get is just tainted by information that was essentially shared in class discords? Um, or are you on the community side here? And do you think that Blizzard is maybe not looking to get their feedback from the correct places? Um, or is potentially outdated in the way they get feedback from the community. Let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.